All right. And now what I want to do is um, I want to show you guys how we can start making use of environment variables within our Docker container. Uh, so if you go back to our index.js file and you remember our express app, uh, the port it's going to listen on is going to be based off of an environment variable called port that we pass in. Uh, if this variable is not set, it's going to default to a value of 3000. So how do we make use of environment variables within Docker containers? First of all, let's go to our Docker file. And we're going to specify a default uh, value for our port variable. So after our copy command, doesn't technically matter where you put this, but we can say env. So this is uh, referencing environment variables. We're going to create one called port. And we're going to say uh, the default value for this environment variable is port 3000. And then we want to expose, remember, this is just merely for documentation purposes. This command doesn't really do anything. Um, instead of having to hard code uh, 3000, what we can say is uh, we can reference this port variable by passing in a dollar sign and then the name of that variable is port. So if this gets updated, this will automatically get updated as well. So let's save that. And what we want to do is, uh, let's see, is, do we have any containers running? Yep. So let's just kill that. All right. And let's rebuild our image because we made a change to our Docker file. And we can do a Docker build for that. All right, so now that those changes are made, uh, our application shouldn't really fundamentally change because now we're just setting our environment variable to be port 3000. Um, before it was defaulting into a value of 3000, but now since the environment variable is set to 3000, everything should theoretically work the same. It's just now going through that environment variable. But what I want to do is when we actually deploy the container, we can specify what value we want that environment variable to be set because this is just the default value. We can always override it. So uh, let's deploy a new container with the same exact command with uh, both of our volumes, but we can pass in an environment variable by passing in dash dash uh, env, or you can just do a single dash and the letter e. So whichever you prefer, I don't know why I prefer the double dash env, but uh, whatever you prefer, uh, and then you pass in the name of the environment variable equals, and then whatever value you want it to be set to. So let's say we want our express server to listen on port 4000. Now it's going to change to 4,000. However, before we hit enter and actually create our container, remember, since our express application is listening at 4,000, we have to change uh, the port that we're sending traffic to. Because right now we're sending traffic to our container on port 3,000, but our express app is listening on port 4,000. So we have to change this to 4,000 or then our application is going to break. Uh, we don't need to change um, the port that we uh, have to hit on our local machine. We could technically change it to 4,000, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, you can pick any value really here. So let's hit enter. And let me just make sure it's running. All right, so it's running. Uh, so now if I go to uh, um, the web browser, hit refresh, it looks like it's working. Just to double check everything's working fine, let's just make a few changes. Let's add the exclamation points back. Save, hit refresh. It looks like everything's working. Uh, just to double check, I do want to make sure that the environment variable did get set. So we can drop back into that container again, like we always do. Uh, where's that command? Docker exec. Uh, so in a Linux machine, if you want to ever see the environment variables, you just type in print env. And so here we can see that the environment variable of port equals 4000 was set. And so that confirms that when we ran uh, our docker run command and passed in the dash dash env flag, we were successfully able to overwrite the port variable or the port environment variable that was specified in our docker file. Now, when it comes to your application, you may have more than one environment variable. Actually, you most certainly will. And if you have a lot of environment variables, uh, you know, we, you can pass in the dash dash env flag as many times as you want. So if you wanted to, um, you can say, uh, where where to go? Here we go. Uh, so if you wanted to pass in another one, you can just do dash dash env and then whatever that variable is. However, if you've got like 10, 20 environment variables, that's kind of a little bit of an exhausting process. And it's a little bit of a pain. And so what you can do instead is we can actually create a file that stores all of our environment variables. So here I'm going to call this, um, you can call it whatever you want, but standard, standard convention is dot env. And here we can just specify port equals 
4,000. Right. And so that's going to essentially do the same thing. And here you could just provide a list of all of your environment variables. And let's save that. And I'm going to kill my Docker container real quick. Right. And so now if you want to load uh, environment variables from a file, instead of having to pass each one line by line, uh, let's go to that Docker run command and we can remove the dash dash env. And we can pass in dash dash, uh, whoops, dash dash env dash file, and then the path to our environment variable. So from our local directory, we do dot slash and then uh, dot env. And so that's going to grab this environment variable file and then all of the environment variables stored in here. Uh, I think I saved it. Yep. And let's hit enter. Hopefully this works. Let's go um, Docker PS. All right, it's running. Um, I'm going to log into the container and do a print NV. Let's just make sure that it's set and it looks like it's set. So those are the two different ways to um, specify an environment variable and uh, to set environment variables for your Docker container so that your application can get the necessary data that it needs.